most of us received our driver's license between the ages of 16 and 18. Over the years, we have become more experienced, competent drivers. Most of us do not think about the challenges of driving when we get in our vehicle on a daily basis. It has become routine. So routine, in fact, that we often do not pay adequate respect to the risks of driving. which includes serious injury or death to ourselves and to others. The objective of this training program is to refresh experienced drivers on key defensive driving principles needed to prevent accidents. While driving is a routine part of life, in reality, some people drive poorly. We see examples of poor driving every day, such as tailgating, speeding, frequent lane changes, and running yellow lights, to name a few. More than 90% of vehicle accidents are caused by driver error or poor driving habits. Typically, poor driving can be broken into two main areas, aggressive driving and inattentive driving. People love to complain about how other motorists drive. In recent years, many of these complaints center on aggressive driving. In a recent survey conducted by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, more than 60% of drivers interviewed believe that unsafe driving by others is a major personal threat to them and their families. Three out of four drivers feel that doing something about unsafe driving is very important. These numbers suggest that in many cases, the same drivers who complain about aggressive driving are themselves driving aggressively. Road rage is often caused by aggressive driving of one or both vehicles. While many drivers do not consider themselves aggressive, they do periodically demonstrate aggressive driving behaviors. We are going to review four of the most serious aggressive driving behaviors, along with what measures that you should take to limit these unsafe actions. They include speeding, tailgating, frequent lane changes and failing to yield. In today's work and home environment, time is a rare thing that most of us wish we had more of. Throughout the day we find ourselves frequently behind schedule and rushing to get to our next appointment or project. Often we try to make up time or when behind schedule try to get back on schedule by speeding. Speeding is a poor means of catching up for lost time. Are the few extra minutes really worth the risk of an accident? Most vehicle trips are less than 30 miles. At 60 miles per hour, a 30-mile trip will take approximately 30 minutes. By driving 10 miles an hour faster, you will save approximately 4 minutes. Are the few minutes you gain by speeding worth the risk of getting a ticket or being involved in an accident? Driving faster than the posted speed limit or driving too fast for road or weather conditions is a factor in nearly one-third of all fatal vehicle crashes. Speeding typically results in you driving faster than the traffic around you, resulting in tailgating, frequent lane changes and passing, all increasing your chance of an accident. Most loss of control and rollover accidents are the result of excessive speed as the driver is driving too fast to adequately control his or her vehicle. To prevent speeding related accidents, plan ahead and give yourself plenty of time. Anticipate changes in speed limits, which typically occur in construction zones, school areas, curves, and exit and entrance ramps. Be prepared to reduce your speed below the posted limit in congested traffic and during inclement weather. Tailgating is one of the most aggressive driving behaviors. Drivers being tailgated often feel threatened and may become distracted or aggressive themselves which may lead to an accident. Often drivers have no intention of tailgating but do so when in a hurry and often do not even realize they are doing it. The driver of the white car is tailgating the black truck in front of him. Will he be able to respond if the truck suddenly slows? At a minimum, he may have to take evasive action, such as slamming on his brakes or swerving around the vehicle. The silver car behind him is maintaining a safe distance. Both the white and silver vehicles are going the same speed, but the white vehicle driver has placed himself in a risky tailgating situation. 
To reduce the likelihood of these types of situations, you must maintain an adequate following distance. Stopping a vehicle under emergency conditions takes a considerable amount of time and space. Maintaining an adequate following distance gives you more time to recognize and respond to the actions of vehicles in front of you. The proper following distance for a typical sedan is two seconds. To determine if you have a two second following distance, follow these basic steps. As the vehicle in front of you passes a landmark, such as a sign, begin counting 1-1000. In this scenario, you pass the landmark prior to two seconds and are following too close. Reduce your speed and count again. 1-1000, 2-1000. While driving, periodically recheck your following distance, particularly as traffic patterns change, to ensure that you're maintaining a safe following distance. The two-second rule applies to average size sedans. In larger vehicles such as pickups or SUVs, three seconds is recommended. We all understand the difficulties of maintaining a safe following distance on a highway as vehicles will often pull in between you and the vehicle you are following, reducing your following distance. When this happens, reduce your speed to increase your following distance. You'll only lose a few seconds of time and you will regain the cushion of safety in front of your vehicle. Always try to maintain a cushion of safety around your vehicle. That is, position yourself on the road with clear areas on all sides identifying outs or escapes. When this is not possible, be aware of the fact that you are boxed in and be prepared to stop or safely react to changes which may occur ahead of or alongside of you. The two and three second rules apply to well-maintained vehicles under ideal road and weather conditions. Your following distance should be increased when pulling a trailer, when the vehicle is fully loaded and when road or weather conditions deteriorate. Find a safe place to park if road and weather conditions deteriorate substantially. What should you do if you're being tailgated? Slow down and maintain a greater following distance from the vehicle in front of you. This will allow you to slow down more gradually when stopping, lessening the chance of being struck in the rear. Also, in most cases, such action will motivate the tailgater to go around you, thus eliminating the hazard. Most of us become frustrated when a car suddenly changes lanes in front of us, particularly when a few minutes later the car moves back into the lane they came from. This kind of frequent lane changing is disruptive to traffic and dangerous. While we can do a little about other drivers' actions, we can limit our own frequency of lane changes. Lane change accidents can be prevented by choosing the appropriate lane to travel in and staying there maintaining constant speed behind the vehicle in front of you and utilizing proper lane change procedures when a lane change is necessary. Often drivers do not think about what lane they are in until they need to turn or exit the roadway. Often this last minute decision results in an aggressive move to change lanes. Drivers should be thinking in advance of where their next turn will be and ensure they are in the appropriate lane to facilitate this turn or exit. By maintaining a constant speed, typically a speed that will allow a consistent space behind the vehicle in front of you, you will limit the need to have to change lanes to pass other vehicles. When changing lanes, do it safely. Common lane change hazards include following the car in front of you too closely, increase your following distance to provide a margin of safety while checking your mirrors and blind spots. Rear-end collisions often occur when a driver is concentrating on the traffic to the side and back of him or her and not on the traffic in front of them. Not ensuring there is adequate room in the lane that you are moving into. If your lane change causes others to slow down or maneuver, you do not have enough space. Wait for a bigger opening. Use particular caution when pulling trailers not adequately clearing your blind spots. Blind spots are the zones to the side and rear of your vehicle which are difficult to see due to vehicle design and mirror limitations. Always adjust your mirrors to reduce blind spots. A trick to observe blind spots is to shift your head and body to view your mirrors at a different angle.
Most experienced drivers know who has the right of way on the road. Aggressive drivers take the right of way from others by changing lanes in front of them, pulling out in front of them, and running red lights. Safe driving involves respecting the right of way of others. The simplest means of preventing right of way accidents is to ensure that you are never taking the right of way from others. You take the right away from others any time the other vehicle has to change their driving to compensate for your vehicle. This includes slowing down, changing lanes, or taking evasive action. Before making any driving maneuver, you should ask yourself, if I were in the other car, would I be impacted by my action? If the answer is yes, you are probably taking an unnecessary risk. Some of the most serious right-of-way accidents occur at intersections when motorists misjudge oncoming traffic while making a left turn. When making a left turn, make sure there is enough time to complete your turn and ensure there is sufficient brake in oncoming traffic before initiating your turn. Keep your wheels pointed straight ahead while waiting to turn so you won't be forced into oncoming traffic if you are rear-ended. If possible, make left turns at intersections with a green arrow. Many severe right-of-way accidents occur when a vehicle pulls onto a roadway from a stop or side road. Drivers need to ensure adequate space is provided. If cars from either direction need to compensate for you entering the roadway, then you made an unsafe driving action. Severe accidents occurring at controlled intersections are frequent as drivers continue to roll through stop signs or run red lights. Drivers must come to a complete stop and respect the right-of-way of others prior to pulling out. Take the time to ensure that you will not be impeding others. Today, many drivers ignore yellow lights, or worse, they accelerate to get through an intersection before the light turns red. Too often, they run red lights and put other motorists at great risk drivers need to demonstrate caution when approaching all intersections and be prepared to stop when traffic lights turn yellow. Always check cross traffic before entering an intersection, even if you have a green light. In summary, aggressive driving is dangerous and is a leading factor in serious accidents. Drivers need to drive in a manner that does not result in others having to compensate for their aggressive driving. Drivers also need to be on the lookout for aggressive drivers and drive defensively around them. Driving a vehicle safely requires your full attention. This is especially true today as traffic congestion and speeds have increased substantially. Other drivers on the road are also more preoccupied and more distracted than ever. How many times have you seen other drivers driving poorly while talking on a cell phone, eating, or even reading something? To drive safely under these conditions, you need to focus all of your attention on driving. At 55 miles per hour, you are traveling at more than 323 feet in 4 seconds. Daydreaming or being distracted for even a moment can put you in a dangerous driving situation without the time to safely respond. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration recently sponsored a comprehensive study on the impact of driver inattention on crashes. The study used in-vehicle cameras to monitor what the driver was doing prior to the accident. The study found that in almost 80% of crashes, the driver was looking away from the forward roadway just prior to the event. Driver inattention is truly a leading cause of vehicle accidents. Why is driver inattention dangerous? because not paying attention to the driving environment around you could put you in a dangerous situation. For example, how would you like to be the passenger in a car driven by someone that closed their eyes for four seconds? Not a pleasant experience, is it? Dialing a cell phone or looking for a building sign can take much longer. What is driver inattention? NHTSA broadly defines driver inattention as any point in time that a driver looks away from the forward roadway, engages in a secondary task, such as reaching for an object, or is moderately or severely drowsy. It's obvious that looking away from the road in front of you can be dangerous, but don't general defensive driving principles instruct drivers to scan their mirrors 
and check their blind spots, which requires diverting eyes away from the road in front of you? Yes. The NHTSA study found that drivers who continually scan the road around them and check their mirrors have fewer accidents. However, this eye glance behavior should be done quickly so as not to lose sight of the road in front of you. Eye glances away from the road in front of you should be less than two seconds. Glances longer than two seconds greatly increases your crash risk. The NHTSA study found that looking at external objects such as scenery, equipment in construction zones, accident scenes, and animals increases your crash odds by almost four times. When doing this, drivers lose focus on the traffic situation around them and no longer have time to safely respond to a hazardous situation. If you do need to look off the road for a street sign or business, increase your following distance and make quick frequent glances rather than long glances away from the road in front of you, always keeping abreast of the traffic conditions in front of you. Many drivers become bored or overconfident and begin to daydream. How many times have you snapped back to reality while driving, realizing you don't remember the last mile of driving? Daydreaming diminishes your ability to recognize and respond to ever-changing traffic conditions and could result in an accident. To prevent daydreaming, concentrate on your driving responsibility by continuously scanning the roadway and your mirrors and focusing your mind on what other motorists may be intending to do. Drivers who are fatigued are less attentive. The NHTSA study found that drowsy driving accounted for approximately 23% of crashes and near crashes. Driving while moderately or severely drowsy increases your crash risk by nearly six times. Drowsy driving can occur during the day as well as at night. Drivers should get plenty of rest to ensure they are not fatigued. If you are too tired to drive, pull over to a safe place to park and get some rest. As discussed previously, driving for most experienced drivers has become routine. So routine, in fact, that they feel safe performing secondary tasks, such as eating, talking on a cell phone, and even reading while driving. According to the NHTSA study, as well as a multitude of other recognized studies, performing secondary tasks while driving significantly increases crash risk. NHTSA found the odds of an accident increased by nine times when reaching for a moving object, 3.7 times when looking at an external object, 3.4 times when reading, 3.1 times when applying makeup, 2.8 times when dialing a handheld device, 2.6 times when inserting or retrieving a CD, 1.6 times when eating, and 1.3 times when talking or listening to a handheld device. All these distractive tasks are within the driver's control to limit or eliminate altogether. To prevent objects from moving around in your vehicle, they need to be secured properly prior to moving the vehicle. If something does fall, do not react impulsively. Pull over to a safe place to park to correct the situation. Place items you may need in close proximity so you will not have to overreach for them. Sightseeing increases your odds of a crash by 3.7 times. Driving requires your full attention. If you must take your eyes away from the road in front of you, limit your glances to one second and never longer than two seconds. Reading, applying makeup, selecting music, and eating are all dangerous, distracting activities that should be taken care of before putting your vehicle in motion. As mentioned previously, driving should not be a time to make up for lost time. Cell phones are a required tool of the business world. We often wonder how anything ever got done prior to cell phones. While cell phones are critical to getting the job done, they are a major distraction while driving and should not be used. A study by the New England Journal of Medicine found the following. Using a cellular telephone was associated with the risk of having a motor vehicle collision that was about four times as high as that among the same drivers when they were not using their cellular telephones. This relative risk is similar to the hazard associated with driving with a blood alcohol level above the legal limit. Is it safe to use hands-free cell phones such as headsets, speakerphones, or other devices while driving? The available research indicates that whether it is a hands-free or handheld cell phone, 
the cognitive distraction is significant enough to degrade a driver's performance. This can cause a driver to miss key visual and audio cues needed to avoid a crash. If you have a cell phone, you should turn it off or set it to roll over to voicemail. Find a safe place to park before responding to a call. The use of seat belts saves lives. In most states, seat belts are required for the driver and front seat passengers. Many states also have seat belt requirements for all passengers. Of all people who die in traffic accidents each year, more than half were not using a seat belt. Make wearing your seat belt a habit. Operating a motor vehicle while under the influence of drugs or alcohol is unsafe and in many cases illegal. We are all fully aware of the consequences of driving while intoxicated or under the influence of drugs. Drunk driving is the leading cause of automobile fatalities in the United States. Never consume any alcohol prior to driving a vehicle. Even a small amount of alcohol can diminish your ability to drive safely. The use of prescription or over-the-counter drugs may also prevent you from driving safely. Your doctor or pharmacist should be consulted regarding the impact of a drug on your driving abilities. If there is any question regarding the drug's impact on your driving, do not drive. Many states have recently passed move-over laws to protect law enforcement personnel during traffic stops. Many drivers are not familiar with this new law. Move-over laws require motorists to change lanes to give safe clearance to law enforcement officers and other emergency responders on roadsides. If drivers can't change lanes or are driving on a two-lane road, they must slow down at least 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. Drivers who do not move over or slow down as required are subject to penalties that can include hefty fines, license suspension, or even jail time. You have just completed the training session, Driving Safely, Autos, SUVs, and Pickups. If you did not understand any of the training topics discussed, Please review the program again or discuss the topics with your safety or fleet manager.